Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by Eden Foods, the most trusted name in certified organic clean food. When you shop online at EdenFoods.com, enter the coupon code ORGVIEW to receive 20% off any regularly priced items, excluding cases. For other promotional offers, please visit TheOrganicView.com's website. And don't forget to check out our contest section. One of the best things you could do to jumpstart your health is to do a cleanse. While there are many options out there, an oldie but goodie has resurfaced. The Soup Cleanse. On today's show, Alita Furman will be my guest today to talk about how you can heal your body with the power of soup. She's going to explain what the Soup Cleanse is, what you can expect, and tips for preparation. So I'd like to welcome to the show, Alina Furman. Good afternoon, Alina. Hi, thank you for having me. Alina, can you tell our audience about yourself and what was it like growing up? Well, um, I grew up actually in the former Soviet Union, the country that does not exist anymore, right? I grew up with both my mom, my grandma, everybody cooked. I never ate out. You know, we always had big dinners and dinner parties and friends and family um, over for lunch, dinner, everything. And so my, my, my mom always cooked soup and my grandma as well, but I never realized the medicinal powers of soups until my, um, what I call now, health opportunity. And uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2009, kind of embarked on my own healing journey, trying to figure out what would help me be a healthier person. I met an incredible um, Chinese medicine doctor, um, a renowned herbalist, Dr. Mao, here in Los Angeles. Because he's an herbalist and his whole family, he's a 38th generation herbalist, actually, He told me of all these different uh, spices and herbs that I should be having in my diet that can reset my system. And a lot of them I didn't know about, and I started researching them, and then I I tried to figure out how I'm going to incorporate them in my diet because there are just so many of them. Because at that time, you know, it was all about juicing. Of course, I was juicing just like everybody else because that's what I thought was going to heal me. So um, once I started looking into all those herbs and spices, I realized that I can put them in the soup and figure out a way to to create something that could potentially help me. And that's how I started my souping uh, trend. <laughs> and uh, so soups really became my magic medicine as I defied the odds and genetic tests and proved to everyone that all we need to do in order to heal is to change the way we eat and the way we look at food. I do, I cannot stress enough the power of spices and herbs. I think one of the things that we kind of not pay attention to in cooking because people are more aware these days uh, where their food comes from and, you know, and we are paying more and more attention at what we're eating. But I think we are not really understanding the power of spices and herbs on uh, in our food. And I think that that's, that's really what's making such a huge difference, what makes my soups so powerful and so potent is that specific, unique combination of specific vegetables with spices and herbs. Did the soup cleanse heal you from breast cancer? Well, it was part of my healing, obviously. I also incorporated meditation and yoga and breathing techniques. I actually wrote about this in my book, all about that. Um, Food is medicine, and we all know that, or most of us do. (laughs) But it's also, it's not enough. There are other things we need to do in order to heal. And so I like to incorporate everything. I've learned so much in the past six and a half years And I wanted to share it with the world. I wanted to tell people what it is that can help them heal their own bodies. And like I said, breathing is super important. Um, We, you know, we live in a stressful world. We, when we stress, we stop breathing. You know, we don't think about breathing, but breathing is super important because it provides ourselves with oxygen. So that's a really important thing to know. And I actually have an exercise in my book on proper breathing. Meditation, also very important because we need to quiet our mind because a lot of the illnesses and diseases that we have 
come to us because we are not taking care of ourselves, whether it's nutritionally, emotionally, all of that, because our we are a whole, you know, our body is a whole, and we can't treat one part and not pay attention to the other. We have to treat our entire body. And so it is very important at the same time as we're treating our physical body to treat our mental state of mind. I incorporated all of those techniques and then food obviously and the soups were the the trigger that as as I was writing the book actually very interesting I was chatting with the doctors that I interviewed in the book and I was asking them what do you think I've done to help myself and Dr. Amen said that I have reset my epigenetic system that the genes that were programmed in my body to hurt me turned around and started helping me and I think that that's pretty incredible. I think so too. Can you share with the listeners exactly what the soup cleanse is, how it works, and what they can expect from doing this? I suggest that people do a three or a five day cleanse, and it's really a kickstart. When you want to start a healthier lifestyle, very often you don't know where do I, what do I do? How do I start? Where do I begin? Because there's so much out there. You know, we're bombarded with information every single day. You know, we are lucky to have so much information, but also it's very hard to sift through everything that's coming our way these days. And so people just kind of give up and they go like, they start and then they don't know how to continue. So what I try to do is to help people understand how to get on that path because that's where I was, you know. I didn't know where do I begin. You know, I'm trying to help others to follow in my footsteps, if you will, and do kind of what I did when I was faced with my health opportunity. (laughs) So three-day, let's start with a three-day cleanse. I suggest that there are certain things that people can do to prepare themselves for the cleanse, or they can just start immediately. I like to jump in right away because I'm one of those people that it's easier for me to just jump in instead of worrying about I'm going to eliminate certain food this week or today or tomorrow. But other people need a little prep. So if you need a little prep, try to eliminate you know things like coffee and meat and alcohol, obviously. Just go easy the week before the cleanse, and that makes it a little simpler to jump in. That said, most of my clients don't really feel hungry. They feel like they're eating too much because I'm suggesting that people eat five soups per day. I encourage people to eat every three hours so you don't feel hunger pains. There are five soups that come in a cleanse for a day or they can prepare themselves, which is so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you get hearty soups. And for mid-morning and mid-afternoon snack, um, you get a broth. And broth, you know, cannot be mistaken that it's not food. It's actually really, really potent uh, meal for you because the broths that I make have literally dozens of ingredients in them, a lot of vegetables, um, spices, and herbs. And uh, they create this really powerful potion that just penetrates through your body, through the cells of your body, and really gives you this massive nutrition boost at the time of the day where you get a little sluggish. So the the soups for morning, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner are really to fuel you and the broths are to energize you and to give you that nutritional oomph, you know, that comes in those parts of the day. So, and basically, after your short cleanse, you know, people usually see results pretty fast because your body starts clearing out all the things, you know, because all of a sudden you're introducing everything that is so healthy, but yet you don't feel that you're depriving yourself because the soups are really delicious. It gives you extra energy. It provides you with all the fiber because that's what's missing when people juice is there's no fiber and so you feel hungry and cold and kind of depleted. Soups also improve your digestion because they are warm and they're already prepared so it, it's easier for your body to digest it and assimilate it. They also sharpen your mind because there's nothing to go there that will cloud, you know, the way you think. The first time I did a cleanse, I will never forget the time. This was the first time in my life that I cleansed. And day two, I did it for a whole week. And so day two to day four and a half were really tough for me. I had like flu-like symptoms and my nose was runny and I just felt completely out of sorts. So I started on a Sunday. So Tuesday through Thursday afternoon were rough. 
And Friday morning, I will never forget, I woke up. I felt like a veil was lifted over my eyes. I've never felt like that before. My mind was so crisp. Like I feel like, you know, when you think of a crisp linen sheet that is over your bed, that's how my mind felt, just totally crisp. And everything just looked different. The green was greener. The yellow was yellower. Like every color was different. And I just felt like a completely different person. I couldn't even believe myself. I kept looking around and I saw things that I never saw before. And it was just an incredible, incredible feeling. I, I don't think I'll ever forget it. So back to what Soup Cleanse provides. It also helps you eliminate stress because soup is soul food. So you can't gulp it like you do juice or anything else or any cold drink. You have to sit down. You're forced to sit down because it's hot and you have to use a spoon to drink it or to sip it. It makes you feel warm, loved. It makes you feel full. Um, It also reduces inflammation. I can't emphasize enough the feeling of love because we all want to feel loved. And I think that, that, you know, besides another human being who can, that can make you feel loved, I feel like soup makes you feel loved. Well, what I like about your book is that you advise your readers to make different types of soup. The last type of soup cleanse I did, which I'm sure many of our listeners have also tried, is the cabbage soup diet. And let me tell you, I think after the first day, I just didn't want to even look at cabbage. Just the side effects, the gas and all that, it just really was a turnoff. But with (laughs) this, you look at the pages in the book and you practically want to eat the pages. The recipes are very easy to prepare and they look delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's all about taste because why deprive yourself? I'm a huge foodie. I've uh, worked as a journalist my entire career. I've traveled the entire world. I've eaten at some of the best restaurants and some of the littlest dives. You know, I actually prefer the dives sometimes because they have so much flavor, and I love flavor in my food. And so I always say if I have to eat healthy, it has to be a flavor bomb. I cannot eat blend food. And that's another reason why I started, you know, cooking my own food and soups is because when I went vegan, I just was not happy with what was out there. I didn't feel like I felt satisfied. Um, I could, nutritionally, I probably was, but in terms of feeling the excitement of food, that was missing, and I needed that. I needed to be excited about what I was eating, and I just couldn't get excited, so I started getting excited in my own kitchen. (laughs) So I started cooking my own soups. In the book, you know, a lot of my recipes come from, you know, inspired by by my travels and by my childhood memories. And, you know, I have several different Thai-inspired soups. Thai food is some of my absolute favorites. And ironically, I learned how to cook in Thailand. The very first time I had a class in um, actually in a five-star restaurant, the restaurant where the queen um, actually eats of Thailand, that's where I learned how to cook Thai food. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I um, I love, 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 love Thai food. And it's actually very tricky to prepare Thai food because of, of the, the balance of flavors in Thai cuisine. So I encourage the readers of the book to not give up because it takes a minute. It doesn't work out just immediately because of the balance. It will turn out great, but to get that perfect balance, it takes a minute. Yeah, so my soups are inspired. So I have Thai-inspired soups. I have soups that were inspired by the Middle Eastern flavors. I have soups inspired by another one of my greatest experiences was um, my uh, meal at the Three Michelin Star Restaurant in Paris at Le Maurice. My gosh, I will never forget that meal. Probably one of the most memorable meals in my entire life. And so I had this incredible soup made from white asparagus, and it was just delectable. And so I recreated somewhat of a, you know, obviously it's not the same because the the soup in the restaurant had cream and, you know, other things, you know, we're very French things. The mine is totally plant-based and vegan. I have a little bit of a drizzle of a truffle oil to bring those flavors together. And it's so elegant and so beautiful. And uh, besides cleansing, it will make any dinner party, um, you know, it will be a standout and all your guests will be raving about it. Guaranteed. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. Now, Alina, you have a recipe for magic turmeric broth. Mm-hmm. Turmeric has been 
coming around in the food circles quite a bit, and people don't really appreciate the value of turmeric. Could you talk about this particular spice and the value that it has in our food? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So turmeric was one of the first the first spices that I discovered in 2009. And in 2009, you know, where, that was before turmeric started making headlines. I really didn't know much about it. I obviously got the powder and started incorporating it in soups and, um, you know, in like scrambles and in rice. I would put it everywhere, really. Uh, then I, I was able to get the actual root. And I love having the actual root as well because it's fresh and it gives you that extra potency. So what I love about turmeric, uh, well, first of all, I'm a big believer in Ayurveda, which is um, an ancient medicine that was one of the first medicines in, the, in, in, our, in our universe, basically. In Ayurveda, uh, turmeric is a symbol of prosperity and you know, doctors, Ayurvedic doctors actually prescribe turmeric to cleanse the entire body. So it is, the root is actually very, very, very cleansing. It's been used for centuries to heal the digestive system because it, and our gut is very important in our healing, and we'll talk about that. And then it's good for your heart. It's good for brain function. It's good for joint health. It's anti-inflammatory, and we're all beginning to understand that. And it's antioxidant, and it also destroys cancer cells, which has also been in the news because there's been multiple studies done about that. And another great benefit, it's anti-aging, and, you know, we're all on that bandwagon these days. I put it everywhere in everything I make. Turmeric broth kind of was born from from that. I... Yeah, I was also researching, I was writing a story about a coconut, about coconut oil, which is another one of my absolute favorites. I wanted to figure out a way to make something that will um, marry all these incredible ingredients that do so much good for us. And so that's how Magic Turmeric Broth was born. I, um, you know, married it to coconut oil, um, garlic, and ginger, and some of the other herbs. And it's fantastic. As a matter of fact, a few weeks ago, I had a client email me, and she was trying to clear uh, psoriasis that she's been fighting for many years. Usually the cleanses that I do for my clients are custom cleanses because everybody has a different goal. Some people just want to lose a few pounds and some people want to look beautiful for the red carpet. A lot of my clients are in the entertainment business. There are quite a few people that are actually fighting serious chronic conditions. So this lady was one of them. So I knew the power of turmeric on the skin and clearing, you know, on the gut. And also people who have psoriasis, it's really great for them to have, besides the green, le- green leafy vegetables, it's also great to have beta carotene and like red soups made from squashes because it's really good for your, for your skin and clearing it, clearing it up. So I put together a cleanse for her and she emailed me and she said that after three days, her psoriasis magically disappeared, which was incredible to hear because when I hear people really being helped by eating this way, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because it just makes me so happy that it helps people heal. Um, yeah. And, and psoriasis is very painful. Yeah. Some people, some people can't stop itching and it's just awful. Yeah. Yeah. Can you take a moment and explain what healthy digestion is? It's a long, long, long topic, but can we talk about poop on the radio? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, so that's actually one bowel, of my <laughs> what? A bowel, a bowel movement is very important, especially when it comes to health. A lot of people don't realize that, but constipation is not something that they want either. Exactly, and it's not just about constipation. I think we don't talk enough about our lower intestines and about um, how important is um, our digestion and our bowels are to our overall health. And I know Dr. Oz talked about it on his show and uh, made a lot of people laugh, but potty talk is my favorite talk. So let's talk potty. <laughs> so the first thing I like to tell people is that they have to go out and get a squatty potty. It's this little uh, plastic stool that wraps around your commode. It helps you eliminate 
properly. And I actually, you know, make fun of it and saying that squatting is the new sitting. And there's also science behind it because there were studies done. And at Stanford, you know, when people are treated at Stanford University Clinic, they actually prescribe patients who have issues to use squatty potty. So now that that's out of the way, uh, you know, digestion is as important as nurturing your mind and your soul. You know, we get sick when our immune system is weakened. And so when you take time to heal your digestive system, your gut, which houses basically 90% of our immune system, that's you are on your way to giving your body and the fighter cells that fight the diseases and everything and green light to destroy and eliminate any cells that are trying to squeeze by and infect your body. Another thing I always tell is, you know, most people feel that illness is a part of life, that when we get a cold or when we don't feel well, it's, you know, it kind of happens, right? We get old, you know, like, you know, the skin gets wrinkly or whatever. But I now feel very differently about it. I think that we in, invite illness into our body by not making proper choices. And healing your gut and healing your digestion is one of the most important things. There's been, in the past five years, there's been a lot of research done on the gut health, and there are a number of books that are coming out and have come out on that topic. I was joking with uh, Dr. Uh, Mullen, who I interview in the book. He's a Johns Hopkins scientist who's been studying the gut for decades, how it was the Hippocrates that talked about that all diseases begin in the gut, right? And that was when? Centuries ago. And so I don't understand why it's taken our medical community this long to start doing research on that. In order to heal the digestion, you have to eat properly because there's just no way around it. And not take medications and use food as medicine. And soups are really great because they're almost pre-digested because the fibers of the vegetables are already softened and it makes it easier to, you know, to heal your digestion that way. Elena, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Could you please share your website with our listeners? Of course. So uh, my website is www.superlina.com. It's Soup and Alina, E-L-I-N-A, which is my name. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and it's a little fairy that I love so much. Um, so that's my website. And then um, we have Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And Instagram and Twitter is at Superlina LA. Facebook is Superlina. Elena's book, Superlina's Soup Cleanse, Plant-Based Soups and Broths to Heal Your Body, Calm Your Mind, and Transform Your Life is now available wherever your favorite bookstore is or on Amazon.com. Elena, I just want to thank you again for being on the show. It has been wonderful learning about your journey and also all the work that you're doing. I know that this is going to help so many people, and I know I myself am going to try the soup cleanse. I think this is just such a great way to kickstart your health. Thank you, June, so much for having me. And it is my dream to help many people and make our world a healthier place. And if I can help in any way, I would, it would just make my life. Thank you. You're very welcome. Folks, please check out the companion article, which will be featured on theorganicview.com, which will showcase two of Elena's beautiful recipes so that you could try out some of her recipes yourself. And also... Check out the book, Supalina Soup Cleanse, Plant-Based Soups, Broths to Heal Your Body, Calm Your Mind, and Transform Your Life, which is available on Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore. Thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon.